During the last decades, cities adopt a more decentralized approach involving the natural water cycle to minimize flood impacts and increase water self-sufficiency in urban areas. The natural water cycle involves the continuous movement of water through the processes of evaporation and transpiration, condensation, precipitation, infiltration, and runoff. To find the ideal water management for your city, you have to look at the local natural water cycle. In the Berlin-Brandenburg area, 80% of the precipitation evaporates, with only 20% going into the underground, thus resulting in almost zero runoff. Sealed surfaces such as buildings, roads, and other impermeable surfaces are responsible for the high amount of runoff and for less rainwater infiltrating into the soil. The lack of evaporation in urban areas is one of the main causes of urban heat islands. Progressive city planners are using the local natural water cycle as a planning tool. The first step towards sustainable water management is the retention of rainwater. In the past, the philosophy was to get the water out of the city as quickly as possible. Today, it is to keep it in the city as long as possible without causing any damage. Nature-based solutions can protect, manage, and restore natural or modified ecosystems. Nature-based solutions such as rainwater harvesting, green roofs and facades, rain gardens, retention ponds, and constructed wetlands significantly contribute to rainwater retention and evaporation in urban areas. For cities like Berlin, rainwater harvesting and evaporation are the first options for rainwater management before infiltrating the rainwater into the ground. Firstly, due to the cooling effect of rainwater. Secondly, since Berlin's drinking water originates from the surrounding regions, its quality is affected by the infiltrated pollution within the urban area. Plants are real masters of evaporation. Therefore, it is obvious that green roofs are an easy implementable tool for this. Green roofs with 5 to 12 centimeters of growth medium evaporate approximately 70% of the annual precipitation. 30% of it will flow as surface runoff, mainly during winter. Companies all over the world are trying to find new techniques for growing plants on walls vertically. With green roofs and walls, the total green area of a building can increase significantly. Phragmetus australis, known as the common reed, is a wetland plant with high evaporation rates. In city environments, the plant can evaporate more than 20 liters of water per square meter a day, two to three times the evaporation rate of freestanding water. Reed has a higher tolerance to pollutants in rainwater and is resistant against heat waves and changing water levels. This illustrates the high potential reed beds and other wetland plants offer for rainwater retention in cities. Trees in parks and forests evaporate water as well. Cities usually heat up to several degrees more than the neighboring forest. The hot, dusty air in the city is cooled, filtered, humidified, and recirculated near the ground. During hot summers, trees, green roofs, and facades need additional irrigation preferably with harvested rainwater from surrounding areas. This is one way to restore part of the natural water cycle. But what about using rainwater to conserve drinking water sources?
When water evaporates from the earth, impurities stay in the liquid phase. This means rainwater is distilled water, and it does not contain any substances except hydrogen and oxygen. When it arrives on the roof or ground surface, it may collect pollen, leaves, metal from rooftops, or biocides from facade paints. Whether a treatment of the rainwater is necessary will depend on the collection surface and the application use. For some applications, rainwater is even more suitable than drinking water. Plants flourish better with natural soft rainwater than with hard drinking water. Due to the softness of rainwater, laundry can be washed with less amounts of detergent. Washing machines and other household appliances like coffee machines will last longer due to less calcification. The company Green Life is disconnected from the city's water network, thus relying completely on rainwater harvesting and grey water purification for all application uses. Through purification and disinfection, it's suitable for drinking, cooking, and washing. For non-drinking water purposes, there is no need for expensive water treatment as the rainwater is similar to distilled water. It is used as process water for cooling the production machines. As underfloor heating, the water heated during the cooling of machines is increasing the temperature of cold concrete floors. In the Bels Ludekestrasse neighborhood in Berlin, the polluted portion of the rainwater, the so called first flush, is collected and treated using planted soil filters followed by UV disinfection. The treated rainwater is used to flush the residents' toilets and for watering the gardens. As a result, only the largely unpolluted rainwater enters the surrounding water body. Rainwater can also be used for indoor cooling purposes. Rainwater is sprayed into the exhaust airflow of the building and the supply air is pre-cooled via a heat exchanger, known as adiabatic cooling. If there is no possibility to evaporate or harvest the rainwater, you can infiltrate it. If you want to infiltrate rainwater into the ground, you can do it using surface infiltration, permeable pavings, or a vegetated swale. This has the advantage of using the vegetated topsoil as a natural treatment plant. Pollutants in rainwater are removed by absorption, filtration, sedimentation, and biodegradation processes during soil passage. Another technical means are infiltration trenches. Where space is limited and soils are moderately permeable, swale trench infiltration can be used. Due to a lack of unsealed areas in cities, you often must take the whole process underground. If rainwater is polluted, for example by traffic, you need to pre-treat the rainwater prior to infiltration. The infiltration tunnel here has a pre-connected treatment pit to clean the rainwater. There are several ways and products to treat rainwater from parking spaces, roads, or metal roofs. Depending on the surface, your treatment needs to focus on certain pollutants which should be removed before infiltration. In cities and on highways where more space is available, Reed beds are often used for rainwater treatment in constructed wetlands. For a sustainable management of rainwater, we should look at it as a resource for drinking, washing and cleaning, and as an instrument to regulate the microclimate by restoring the natural water cycle. In 
many cities, much more water is needed than there is rainwater available. Therefore, to reduce the water import, you need to find more sustainable water sources inside the city. One of these sources can be grey water. Domestic wastewater is classified into two main categories. Black water, which originates from toilets and includes yellow water, or urine, and brown water, or feces, and grey water, originating from sinks, showers, bathtubs, laundry, and kitchens. First, you need a second pipeline network to separate the water flows the so-called dual pipe system. You can imagine it is similar to waste recycling. You would not mix organic waste, glass, paper, and residual waste if you want to recycle one specific raw material. Hair can clog and damage pumps and must be initially removed using a sieve. For gray water treatment, you essentially need microorganisms and sufficient amount of dissolved oxygen to oxidize the organic constituents found in grey water. The next treatment stage is to free the water from suspended solids and microorganisms. This is achieved using either a membrane or a sand filter. UV disinfection is usually recommended to produce a hygienically safe treated grey water for reuse in many applications such as toilet flushing, laundry, and irrigation. The use of treated grey water for non-potable purposes can save a lot of drinking water by simply using the same water twice. An advantage over rainwater is that the amount of grey water produced daily in a household is stable throughout the year. Innovative grey water systems even use the heat of the approximately 30 degrees Celsius warm grey water to preheat the cold drinking water before it is heated to the final temperature in the boiler. This considerably saves more energy than is needed to operate the system. <laughs>